Uh, thank you for uh, calling on me. My question has to do with cravings, perhaps hurtful cravings. I'm a uh, health counselor and a vegan raw foodist, and I've noticed that, uh, for instance, the obvious things like alcohol and drugs have uh, certain substances in them that cause people to feel good for the moment, and then it really hurtful for their health. And in fact, there are some common foods that way. And so my question is, could you speak to that, how it, it spirals down people, chemically, really? They're focusing on the feelings, and yeah, it feels good to, to eat this or to watch that TV program, and then uh, later they feel bad or it hurts their health. And so they use the chemicals to feel better again. What... Uh, can be done about that. Well, there are, what there are, suggestions? There are a number of things that we want to give you about this. First is that you have a very brilliant cellular mass that you call your body where there is cellular intelligence that understands everything that we've been talking about here today. In other words, we're talking about alignment and making peace with what is. And the cells of your body know how to compensate for anything that takes them a little out of balance. So, you introduce something to your body that is not necessarily on your list of most healthy things to do. Let's say that it's not something that your body is naturally accustomed to. It's not the same molecular structure as the body. Let's say it's not vibrationally uh, in alignment with the body. Let's say that it's a distorted chemical that, as you say, uh, stimulates the body in some way, but it is not in harmony with the makeup of the body. So you ingest it, you eat it or drink it or sniff it or shoot it or get it in your body in some way. And now your brilliant body, cellularly, recognizes that something has happened and immediately begins to adjust to it. So it produces all kinds of compensating factors in order to maintain its natural balance. Cell by cell by cell by cell by cell by cell by cell. By cell. So now it's adjusted to this thing that you've done. And now that adjustment translates to you as a craving in time and not very much time. Once your body adjusts to this new thing that you're giving it, it does such a good job of compensating for it that it translates to you as if your body wants it. Because if your body now has adjusted to it and you don't give it to it, now your body's out of adjustment again. So now it goes through a withdrawal for that thing that it is adjusted to. That's mm -hmm. so important to understand. Yeah, understand. So understanding that, then you must conclude, if your logic follows at all, that given a little bit of time, your body will adjust to wherever it is. In other words, if you can go three days without the reintroduction of something back into your system, your body will completely find its balance again. But few people can make it through those three days because the withdrawal is uncomfortable in the meantime and even unconsciously they find themselves gravitating to what their cells have adjusted to who seem to be asking for. You are inspired by your cellular activity. In other words, a lot of people are giving their body what they think their body wants when their body is only wanting what they've already given it. Isn't that interesting? So that's one basis of understanding that we think can go a long way for anyone who's strong-willed enough and determined enough that they are going to get control of their own body. Most people do not fall into that category. Most people are not very deliberate about much of anything. Most people are letting the majority of their vibration follow or respond to whatever they are observing on some level. So you observe with your eyes and your ears, you are observing with all of this physical ability to observe, and what you're observing tends to be the basis of your vibration. It's a rare one of you who deliberately chooses a thought for the purpose of producing an emotion or mood, for the purpose of producing a vibration, for the purpose of affecting some result. In other words, that kind of deliberate creation is really rare, even though that is really what we're teaching, and it's what all of you knew and want to remember. 
It's fun to be in physical form, but it's so delightful to be in physical form directing your experience. That's what you wanted to do. There was another part of your question. Bring it to us again about the cellular requesting. I think you pretty well addressed it as far as uh, the cells getting used to something and then having that taken away and then they crave it and so uh, the person can be focusing on what they want that feels good they're following their bliss and their bliss at that moment seems to be those potato chips All right, or so that junk food that's how to understand why the craving Sorry. persists Then we talked about you being extensions of source energy and when you're thinking thoughts or having experiences or remembering something that causes that perfect alignment everything is wonderful in your world but when you are focused upon some memory or observing something that doesn't please you or noticing some lack in your experience now by virtue of what you're focused upon you're not connected to source energy so you've got a vibration going on that's out of balance you've got a lackful component to your vibrational offering so in that not aligned but instead lackful state of being what foods would you be a vibrational match to the comfort foods the the junk foods yes and so now that's so big. destructive so now we want to talk about you've been following us as we talk about this emotional scale different people relative to different subjects under different conditions have different vibrational set points relative to money you might feel fearful relative to relationship you might feel pleased you might feel content you might feel joyous in other words everyone has different set points depending upon what subject they're focused upon if money is something that you're thinking a lot about and you're fearful about it then there's a fearful component in your vibration a great deal of the time so now think about different physical conditions of health feeling vibrant and alive and eager and hearty is a vibrational match to a vibration of appreciation and love that's pretty dominant if you're having frequent headaches then your set point is probably around frustration and overwhelmment somewhere if you've got ulcers your vibration is probably around something denser if you've been afraid for a long time now there are heavier diseases that are a vibrational match in other words where you hang out on this emotional scale is what shows up in your physical experience in lots of different ways so somewhere in life's experience even before physical manifestations of illness in your body or physical conditions showing up are food cravings we say what you think and how you feel about it and what you offer vibrationally and what manifests is always a vibrational match and then we say what you're thinking and feeling and what shows up in your dream state is a manifestational match dreams are manifestations too they just show up faster in other words your vibration will manifest in a dream faster than it will manifest in what you call real life experience discord in your vibration will show up as cravings of detrimental foods faster than it will show up as illness and then the result is you piece it together and you say the detrimental food caused the illness and we say not quite right the detrimental vibration of lack is responsible for both the craving and the illness but the food that you're eating is not necessarily the cause of the illness that's why some people can eat it and not be negatively affected by it and some people can't really good huh it's very good So you can't assume that that particular substance is static. You want to, but we don't see it playing out that way. However, if your vibration is one of lack, then it's logical that you would attract that. In other words, you can do a pretty good job of sniffing it all out, but we would sniff it out from the inside rather than from the outside. Rather than labeling the foods and saying, avoid these, which nobody can do if they've got a craving we would deal with the craving and what we want to say to you is the craving is not for the substance it's a vibrational craving it's the craving for alignment sometimes when you're not in alignment 
You try to fill that void by going out and buying one more thing and bringing it home or eating something or drinking something. But the only way you can really fill that void is with the only thing that will fill it, which is alignment. Make a decision and line up with it. And it's the lining up with the decision that's responsible for the well-being, not necessarily the specifics of the decision that you've lined up with. You see, so the, theoretically, theoretically, you I could, could eat thrive. junk food, enjoy it, and my health would be enhanced. You and I could live 150 years on Taco Bell. Theoretically, food. yes, but, but you, I, I don't. I, theoretically, I just don't yes, quite but see it. well, so it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work, work for, for me. You, yeah. you see, but as you look out into the world, there are those eating junk food and thriving. Well, you Short can't term. find them because you don't believe that. Law of attraction is not going to show those to you. In other words, that's the thing about statistics. You see, when you come to a conclusion, then law of attraction can only give you things that support your conclusion. But we're here to tell you there are a lot of really junk food eating fools out there who are thriving in ways that you want to thrive because they're not messing with action. They've got the emotional journey thing down, you see. And now we'll go along with you in this way. When you get your emotional journey in alignment, when you get tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you begin to gravitate to things that feel really good. Jerry and Esther, when they first hooked up with us in a conscious way, they were right here in this city. And Esther said, Abraham, what do you know that we don't know? And we said, how much time do you have? <laughs> And then we said, get specific about anything, ask us anything, and utilize us in any way you can. Get lost, we'll help you find your way out. There is no subject off limits. Anything that you want, we are here to assist you all day, every day. So they were in a grocery store one day on their quest for lovely life. And Jerry said to us, can you choose foods that are beneficial to us. And so we said, yes, follow us. And we went through the grocery store, filled their cart full of different foods from all departments and said, if we were standing in your physical shoes, this is what we would choose. And Jerry said, what is it about this food that has caused you to choose it? And we said, there are no preservatives in any of this food. And Jerry was not sure he believed that because he had not seen us reading any labels. He just saw us putting things in the basket. And so he read every label only to discover that none of the food that we had selected had preservatives in it. How were we able to choose it? Vibrationally. In other words, all of the food was more alive. None of the food had been rid of its life qualities by trying to preserve it by killing most of what's active within it. In other words, if you want your bread to last, you'd better kill the active ingredients. Otherwise, that bread is going to become moldy just like it is supposed to. And if you don't want it to do that, then you have to put something in it that destroys its ability to do that, which makes it less alive, which makes it less beneficial to you. We acknowledge that. And so we are not for a moment saying to you that there are not foods that are more a vibrational match to the mechanism that is you. Certainly that is true. But we do not encourage approaching it from the outside in by making a list of things I should eat. We encourage that you get in alignment with who you really are and let who you really are choose your food. And they're still choosing those foods. In other words, those foods that we chose, those are the ones that they buy. But it doesn't keep Esther from eating potato chips with her Subway sandwich on occasion. Right. It just tastes good. It does, doesn't it? Thanks. Yes, indeed. And if she doesn't get carried away with the potato chips, she will not develop a craving that will carry her away into that. In other words, everything in balance. You have to understand that the, the well-being of your body is so dominant that you have huge leeway. In other words, you're not going to eat something and tip yourself off into a negative spiral. You are a veritable chemical factory. Really, you are. And your mechanism has the ability and facility and knowledge and wherewithal to take anything that you give it and from it 
derive value and benefit. Thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs>